What is up, my fellow participants and spectators of the gaming community? And it has turned into a complete crap show once again on social media. It is absolutely unavoidable. It makes you not even want to flip open the app at this point with how ridiculous it's getting. And to make matters worse, there is a big situation starting to brew out of the release of Starfield. And Xbox needs to deal with this pretty quickly, especially when it comes to the success of future games. Um, and, but let's just kind of start with the fact that, you know, Starfield is actually doing quite well. The game has 6 million players on its actual official launch date outside of the pre-release period. It is not only a big, massive success for Microsoft, but it's also the biggest launch success that Bethesda has ever had. And that's interesting considering that the game is exclusive to the Xbox console and on PC and even without the PlayStation brand, it is still the biggest launch that Bethesda has ever seen. Now, with the success of Starfield, Phil Spencer and Todd Howard are constantly being put into interviews on television, gaming media websites, you name it. And they're getting praise for Starfield and the, all the success that the game is having. But also there's this just tiny detail about Starfield and a situation with the game that constantly gets brought up to the point where Phil Spencer almost smirks every time somebody asks him and Phil and Todd Howard practically rolls his eyes and that is exclusivity. Is the game coming to any other platform other than Xbox and PC? And that's where Phil Spencer has told everybody at this point that the game is actually as accessible as it can be. Any device that has a web browser will be able to play the game, but on a console preference, it's on Xbox. Get over it. It's not going to end up on that other platform that has the blue architectural game console going on over there. And that's where I just have to laugh at how Phil Spencer is constantly being asked that question. Todd Howard actually kind of rebuttaled and told the journalist site that he is actually happy that Starfield is an Xbox exclusive because it made it easier to develop the game. He was able to concentrate on making that game as best as it could be on the platform that it was going to be on. And also, it makes it synonymous with one brand. And he even re uh, related it to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Whenever you think of that game, you think of the Nintendo Switch. And now when you think of Starfield, you think of Xbox. And he cannot be any happier with that fact. Especially, again, because the game is seeing uber success even without it being on the PlayStation console. This is where the systemic problem that Microsoft needs to address very quickly for other games they release in the future is the fact that the gaming media landscape is actually a little biased against the Xbox brand. We've seen journalists recently over at IGN get up in their feelings about how they're not happy that Xbox was able to purchase Bethesda and somehow Xbox had some kind of war on poor people because they gave early access to the game to those that could afford it and poor people had to wait for it to go to game pass i mean we have seen a com a lot of different takes hot takes at this point on just the game from gaming media journalists alone uh euro gamer and the guardian and metro uk were withheld review codes by bethesda they were told that they could review the game when it came out um for people like you and i that basically at this point those three companies are not that special and it all stems around the biased nature that euro gamer has had in the past when it comes to xbox but one of the big things that came out of it was what M Metro UK did to Hi-Fi Rush. They essentially knocked the review score of the game because they weren't happy with how lackluster not only the library of games that Xbox has released through its first party studios, but also the fact that it had a very lackluster 2022 year. And they even said in their review that because of the lackluster um, situation of Xbox's games, they just couldn't give hi-fi rush the accolades it deserves even though it was a great game and some of the best cell shading they have ever seen and even in one kotaku article they wrote that the game starfield was not going to be as good as other fans have tried to make it out to be 
and that it wasn't going to be the game of the year material that we saw with God of War Ragnarok and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and talk about already making up your mind before the game had even came out. But we've also seen other people try to come out and say that the game feels too much like Skyrim or Fallout. But I mean, would you want it to feel like anything else? I mean, you'd want it to feel like a Bethesda game and heaven forbid Bethesda was able to craft a game that felt like a Bethesda game. It's what they do, open world RPGs. And there is a lot of similarities between the other games, yes. But when you are a talented artist, you know your craft and yes there is a certain signature to your craft and the look and feel of a bethesda game will translate into other bethesda games but there was also the other argument that somehow all the planets are just just feel empty well if you know anything about space exploration is hey guess what finding life on other planets is actually extremely rare and when you do find life on another planet, which has yet to even happen in real life, but when you find it in Starfield, it's something to celebrate about because that is a big deal because it makes that experience that much more exciting that you finally found some life on another planet. Now, with all the craziness that has been taking place recently with the media journalism situation and just the outright review bombing that is taking place on Metacritic for the title, Social media has been in a little bit of a conversation amongst themselves with the people that are on there and just how this situation is getting completely out of hand and that, yes, there is some definite gaming media bias out there when it comes to the Xbox brand. Just like they don't like saying certain foul language in their articles and on social media and their YouTube videos, these gaming media websites also treat Xbox like another four-letter word. We saw it recently when IGN was hyping multiple games that were coming to the other platforms, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and PC, but curiously, they always seem to omit the word Xbox in letting people know that this game is also going to be there. Which doesn't seem very objective because when you are a journalist, it's actually your job to report the news and be as factually secure and factually accurate in your information as possible. And that also includes letting people know that a game is going to be on other platforms other than the ones you prefer. You need to take your personal preference, bias, opinions, and everything out of the fact that nobody cares about that stuff. They only want to know about the truth and what the news really is, and they don't need to have your sugar-coated opinions and other stuff sprinkled all over it. We saw a situation like that recently take place on social media when a reviewer over at IGN gave Starfield a very low score and then decided to go on social media and have some tirade with the people on social media, basically again going on this entire spectacle about how microsoft bought bethesda and that again it was a war on poor people i mean this guy completely went off decided to try to have this huge freaking argument with everybody and even used reviews from past games to somehow try to prove his point he at this point made ign look like one of the biggest laughing stocks of the gaming media community and that is where people are starting to have this big disconnect when it comes to gaming media as a whole. And this is where Microsoft needs to kind of flip the script, change things up and cut some of these guys completely off, in my opinion. It is what it is. I know nobody wants to hear that. But at this point, these gaming media sites that don't want to be objectively accurate there is no place for them. They, they just, we need to move on from that. Microsoft needs to do what they do best. And that is give information and other things that are needed to hype the game and get the news out there and give all that info to not only professionally well done content creators that don't just change their opinion when a game looks like it's potentially not becoming what they tried to make it out to be kind of like what we saw with Redfield. Like we know who they are. There was definitely some content creators out there that flip flopped on their opinion when they saw that the big opinion was not what they were trying to push. You stick to your guns. You don't just change your story to kind of fit the narrative of, of, you know, like, Hey, look, I tried telling the same thing, but getting back to it, 
it's where Microsoft also needs to help other up and coming gaming media websites get this information out there and build up other media websites to take the place of these broken and defunct websites that just can't seem to get quality control issues and personal bias out of the articles and content that they create. So guys, that's all I've really got to say on the situation and how I feel about it. I'm curious on what you think too. Please let me know down in the comments section below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe, all that fun stuff that really helps my channel grow here on YouTube. Also, please check out the end card here at the end of the video. Explore my channel, watch my latest video. And also, really remember that the console war as a whole is absolute dogma. Don't get caught into the trap of participation. Just be sure to play the games you love on the platform you prefer, no matter what anybody says. I am Centurion1307, and thank you for watching.